location. So normally producer dude has, we've got some crappy volumes and things going on, but it's our fault. But we've got the Cleveland Boat Show here just getting ready to go underway. And it's kind of a hot mess of noise, I'm not gonna lie to you, but we're gonna deal with it because we're on site here live and direct with Ed Stah Husky. Oh, you murdered it, Stahusky. He's Polish, I Polish fisherman. We do at least three attempts. Yeah, what's your excuse? I, I'm a ginger. Oh uh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes I, sense, yeah. But I'm glad to have you. We've been kind of trying to plan this for a while. Now that we've got you right here, it's uh, it's always good to do some of these in person. And it's kind of like everybody's online and, yeah, and that's, yeah. that works. Yeah. It's easier. Yeah, it's way easier. Your work schedule and things. But reality is, is getting here and kind of doing these things hands on, it tends to be a little better thing. So a lot more fun. It is. Well, you're, you're a good fisherman, but you know, I like that you're, you're kind of like me, you call it like it is and you're not yeah. afraid. Yeah. So we're, we're going to go, I'm not even sure what Pandora's box we're going to go down, but uh, fishing is, is the, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, let's you just. You ready for this? Well, let's just start you with, ready? you know, I did a little research because, uh, you know, I tend to have a lot of friends that are in the business or acquaintances or something. Friends. And, you know, they said, you're going to have Ed on? And I'm like, well, we haven't really decided yet. And he said, how about the toilet boat? You should start them with that. And I'm like, you know, that sounds like a great way because we're such a dumpster fire, right, producer dude? Like, dumpster fire? It, he's shaking his head. Yeah. So, toilet boat, like. Toilet boat. My first Ranger, 621, bought it over the phone. Was at another dealer, and the, they wouldn't, I guess, pay any attention to me. You know, young guy coming in there, think I have no money. So, got on the phone with Cabela's, said, hey, I'm going to buy a boat. And they said they had one, bought it. Uh, and then was scrounged around for sponsors. Penguin Toilet said, yeah, we'll sponsor you. And then, and so I, let, yeah. So let me interject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because Ranger Boats is a big part of the Big Water Podcast. Yeah. It wasn't Ranger Boats that was the toilet boat. No, no, no. No, it, it was the toilet sponsor. Uh, there you go. I see, that's a good there clarification. You go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Because there's other boat brands that maybe, you know, I won't say names, uh, but you some, can't go there. some yeah. guys have yeah. said they're yeah. toilet, but nevertheless. No, no, no. So the Penguin Toilets? Yeah. I haven't heard of them. Maybe you did a good or bad job pretty, with Pretty that. good product, man. You should get one or, or five, depending yeah. on, you know, your circumstances. Yeah. I use one every day. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, so all since we quit using outhouses, we use toilets. I mean, whatever it takes, right? That would be a good slogan, but yeah. So that didn't, that, that lasted a little while. For a while. Um, and then uh, went to more, I guess, uh, endemic sponsors after that. Yeah. More traditional. Yeah, traditional. Yeah. yeah like rods yeah. and reels. Rods and reels, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't get Big Red Gum to sponsor me, but that would have been cool. I might have a better yeah, chance of yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. Me and producer do both. But. Yeah. So getting into like the fishing end of things, I mean, you're a Michigan guy. And you know, Michigan is a pretty diverse fishery. I mean, I hate Michigan. No offense. Uh, yeah, not everybody's cool. I'm not yeah. Ohio State. Go Bucks. Ah, uh, no, go green, go white. Okay, well, that's better than yeah, the team up yeah. north. We so. can have mutual hate for the Wolverines. That's fine. I think we're already bonding. Yeah, we're yeah. Already. But, you know, Michigan is really diverse, whether you're on, you know, the Great Lakes, whether it be Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, uh, Lake Huron. Yeah. Inland, well, there's a lot of inland waters. Inland you got the UP, great. Yeah. St. Mary's River. I mean, it's, so I, would, I guess where I'm going with that is, is as we talk with guys and do things, there are guys like myself a little bit, like mm -hmm. you're pigeonholed a little bit. Like if you live in Ohio, I'm not saying there's not good other bodies of water, but generally speaking, like you fish Lake Erie and it's rather you do it for smallmouth perch or walleyes, right? Because sure, sure. there's not that diverse fishery that you guys have. And so did that help you? I mean, give me a little background kind of growing up doing that or where you went, what you did. And yeah. So growing up, we definitely fished Lake Erie a lot out of a small boat, but uh, that also meant like if it was a windy day, we couldn't fish Lake Erie. Uh, we'd go to an inland lake and go chase walleye in places where guys still don't know that there's massive fish in some of these inland lakes and you know my secret lakes you know you, you would like to know where they're well, at well most but, most of the state records actually are taken on inland bodies yeah, of water whether yeah. it's smallmouth or walleyes i mean they're not actually on the big lakes ironically high traffic lakes all sport lakes that are just getting pounded by you know my favorite jet skiers and wakeboarders so um, I love those guys. They're, they're the producer dude is a jet skier, by oh, the way. Yeah, sorry to hear that. I mean, yeah, punch yeah. him right in the you eye. Buy one of these. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. dumpster fire. Yeah, but, whatever. But you, no, you're right. It's it's mm -hmm. you know a lot of people don't fish those lakes because of jet skiers or they just don't think to because hey, Lake Erie's got more fish in it. But right. a lot right. of competition too. A lot of competition, but I I mean there's something about 
doing different techniques, trying new water that I've always been interested in. That's why I started doing the, the circuit, traveling to new states. I, every time there's a new body of water on it, I get more excited for those than going back to the same place over and over again. Even though it changes from year to year, you know, you kind of get trapped into some of the, the things you've done before there, where a brand new body of water, I might look a little bit online about it, to, just to see like data from DNR about migrations, but I kind of take everything that the locals do and I throw it out the window because everybody else is going to do that, right? So I might go get the creek chubs, but I, I have no patience, ADD. I'm like, okay, I got to let this thing eat it for five minutes. Uh, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm going to go power fishing for them. And, and it's funny too, because you think of fishing and patience and a lot of the best fishermen that I know, like Al Linder or Tom Keen and some of these guys, I mean, they literally can't, I mean, they can't pay attention for five seconds. I've never seen anybody move as fast as Tom Keen. He's, he's like, he's a, yeah, he's, yeah, 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 he's, yeah. he's like, he's drugged up even when he's not. I don't know what he does on his free time. Well, I'm not, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tom, yeah. he's been on the podcast, but I don't yeah. know. I don't think he does like hard drugs. I meant just like caffeine. Yeah, but, you know, I know. But I ankle picked him in the boat one time. You have to ask him about that. Ankle picked. Ankle picked him. Made him cry and say, uncle. Oh, no. Side so But at any rate. So, in all seriousness, like, so traveling around, I think that, you know, those inland bodies of water and those things are like, let's say, I'm not, again, not putting words in your mouth, but mm. like St. Mary's River or something. The, fishing those bodies of water before you started fishing, like on the NWT or, or national tournaments, do, does that really help you quite a bit? I mean, it's got to help you more than Erie, generally speaking? I think Erie is its own thing. It's, the friends refer to it as like easy, you know, you, you can come here and catch tons of fish it's a great Which I body hate that title yeah yeah but definitely it's it's Easier. labeled that right um no place else in the world has as many walleye as it. it's it's astounding and everybody right. should come experience it if they haven't get over here but um definitely i fished the river a lot detroit river so you know getting used to jigging tactics and understanding that boat control and, and that's yeah. a different deal too yeah. really like if you you can fish and and this is my opinion i'd love to hear yours on it mm. like i fished quite a few rivers like let's say the reservoirs out west or, yeah. or things like that or a fox river or something like that and you fish the Detroit river that's a different animal when you have six foot waves blowing you know basically changing the current blowing chop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. six footers going, you know, south when it's. Uh, Are you from Minnesota? Six footers in Detroit River? Uh, at the mouth? Yeah, at I, the mouth. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I legit have seen it. All right. But when that current backs up, it, it, the Detroit River fishes because of its size yeah. and the complex. I mean, to me, it fishes different than what you think of as a traditional walleye river. It's definitely a, a strange thing going on in Detroit River because you have fish going in both directions all the time. Fish coming from above downstream to go spawn on reefs and in the Maumee River. You have fish going up from Lake Erie into it. And there it's, if you think you can just stay on them three days in a row, you're, you're kind of crazy to stay in the same spot. Well, so. a fun fact for people that have listened to our podcast before i'll kind of fill you in we've had i can't remember producer if you remember if it was travis hartman or uh, chris vandergoo but one of the, the fisheries biologists we had they said like the fish in the, uh, the detroit river sure a lot of them are not actually from lake erie right like they come from like huron yeah. or st Clair, and you're like i mean st Clair, you get lake huron you're like really and a lot of the fish from saginaw bay actually go to the maumee river to spawn right like through St. Clair River, through Lake St. Clair, down the Detroit River. And so that's why when I, we've had conversations like this, and that's mm -hmm. why the guy that lives close there and fishes that, I'm always interested to hear your, your take that's going to be better than most. Because yeah. when I say it's a different river, it's like, e even if it's not the size or the way it fishes, is when you have millions of walleyes going in, like right. most places we're going to go fish elsewhere, you don't have that. they're not going to have that. No. And, it, and it's going to fish different because of the waves and the way that that's happening and the yeah. size of the fish. I mean, And just the number of boats. It's you know, it, it's blown up, you know, three decades ago, everybody was centered in basically the, the jig uh, donating capital of the world, Trent Channel, and people learned mid-river, then they learned upper river. Now you can go out there and see 10,000 boats across the river on a nice day. It's pretty so bizarre. Is yeah. that an internet deal or is that a tournament deal? 
that caused that explosion of knowing the top to bottom? I think the internet. Because there there's always been tournaments, but I think internet, and just over time, right? But those spot out. trackers, you know, that they've got on some of those couple different tours where they're like, oh, here's the leader oh, here. Oh, you mean specific spots for sure, right? That to, to be able to see that and see it in tournaments and, I don't know, it, light speed is how information travels now. So before somebody might miss it because they're off by a week before they get the information. They know instantly because somebody's live while they're out there and, and showing that stuff, which is great for the sport. It gets more people involved. They get excited to go out and see that stuff. And if you can deal with I don't know, a lot of boat traffic, it'll make you a better angler anyway. Yeah. So Ross, I, I want to stop the podcast for a second. Oh, I, I know. Okay. We'll, get back, we'll get back to the guest in a minute. I saw you... I was, I was looking at stuff. I was researching. Get it? I was researching. For oh my god! You're you're doing your job. Oh my god! I'm doing my job, and I was on something like called like Powder Puff, which I don't know why you're on Powder Puff, but I saw your face on something called Powder Puff or something like Powder that. Powder Hook, man. Powderhook.com. Okay. Well, what is that? Well, <laughs> as you uh, kind of found out, we're cheating on a little bit. Normally, the fellow listeners there at Big Water know that you have to tease me with ice cream to give a fishing report because I quite frankly hate them. But we are doing an extensive fishing report, amongst other things, with uh, powderhook.com. And they've got a bunch of things across Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff, too. But we're doing a detailed fishing report. They're talking about really detailed stuff with what's going on specifically on Lake Erie here in the Western and Central Basins and even a few times there in the Eastern Basin in the summer, now through May of 2023. So we're going to be doing lots of stuff. And you already seen some of it because this, you caught me red-handed, but we've got a perch, you know, information on it. We're talking about planer boards. We've got all kinds of different information, but with myself and then some other Lake Erie studs that basically are teaching how to catch more walleyes, what's going on currently. And I mean, powder hook. Powderhook.com. It's it's a one-stop shop right now for Lake Erie info, whether it's a fishing report, videos, or some you know written articles, how to you know select a charter captain like myself, different things to think about and talk about. So a lot of unique things there, as you already know. So powderhook.com. That's where we go. We did a show um, with Country Steve here, would have been like April or May, or do you remember when that was? It was like May maybe. And we were actually spot locking the river and casting jig and plastics. It's a blast. That was a hoot, you know, and that's, again, it's not like we invented that or anything, but that isn't done a lot or isn't, it's getting more public. Yeah. But, you know, to go do that, if you fish the river like I have, like we call it, uh, well, we can't say exactly what we probably used to call that, but uh, maybe we can, the whore hole. That's what guys used to call it down, down there. Down below the stacks. Yeah. That, yeah. The candy you know, canes, whatever yeah, you want to call yeah, them. Yeah, the candy yeah, canes yeah. might be a little more PC, but. Yeah, yeah. You would go down there in the past, like you said, there'd be a thousand boats. You basically go through about 50 jigs. Yeah. And, you know, that's when we started doing this casting Make thing. Make it rain jigs yeah. for a minute just to get it out of the way. Yeah, yeah throw yeah. them in the water, yeah, sacrificial. whatever happens. But I, I, funny story is digressing on that. I can remember one of the first times I fished there. It was probably 20-some years ago with uh, some guys. You and came late, huh? Yeah, I was like 15. I mean, I'm not... Uh, what? It was like... What were you doing? You should have got there when you were five. Dude, I didn't want to go to Michigan until I loved the last possible chance I had to, no offense. Yeah. And I still argue, like, I, I would rather jig the flats on Erie because I don't have to do with, like, what we're just I'm about uh, to tell you. Yeah, so yeah. I watched a guy netting a fish, and a fight ensued, and a guy got in another guy's boat because they were literally, like, and you know this, but people right that are yeah. either watching this or listening, they're this far apart, and this guy is netting a fish, and he broke another guy's rod in another boat because when he went and jabbed the fish and got it, like, I don't know what he was supposed to do different, but he got another guy's rod in the net. Cool. And so then that guy jumped in his boat, and he was taking, you know, I'm taking this rod, and there was this, basically, fight that ensued on the water, oh, and I'm Pirates like... Pirates of Detroit River. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I'm thinking, like, if you're fishing so close to someone that your rod tip goes into someone else's landing net when they're landing a fish, that... I'm not into that. It's kind of problematic, yeah. yeah. But again, now that they're fishing at the bridge or up towards you know the north end and, and you're casting plastics on little seams that are basically, you can only put one or two boats on. Right, right. So, I mean, are you doing kind of stuff like that too? Yeah, I mean, even to the point where casting things other than jigs and... and oh, do tell? Yeah, well, no, I'm not telling you that. I Come thought, on. I thought we were partially acquaintances. Uh, no, nah, you know, kind of know you a little bit, but... An acquaintance know. friend? Yeah, Come on. Yeah, yeah, but definitely, like, I think electronics have opened up 
visibility to the fish that you would have scared with your boat before trying to mark them with sonar, right? If you're doing traditional 2D, now, you know, side scans and forward facing, you can see some of these flats that are fairly shallow and not spook them and just pick them off one after another. So with, with forward facing sonar in the river, and generally speaking, I would tell people that when and again, we're, we're generally in the past talking 2D sonar, but yeah. when fish are on the bottom in the river, you're not going to mark them. Yeah. So what you're seeing with the with the forward-facing sonar, are you seeing those fish that they're obviously off the bottom a little bit? Or? No, you're seeing the fish that are on the bottom. If you have it dialed in right, and then also on the side scan, you'll see them as you're going down. So even though I would just do the traditional vertical drift, if I notice left or right of me, there's better boulders or something yeah well or better amount of fish you'll actually see you know the shadow of the fish as they're on the bottom and oh it's not very hard to reel up slide over 20 50 60 feet and get in the middle of those fish so um traditional 2d it's it, in that type of river is pretty hard to to stay on them and really understand what's yeah. going on it gets kind of useless real quick yeah. i mean we're still seeing a small in my opinion seeing a small percentage because like when we're ice fishing and it's a more controlled environment when fish are truly on the bottom it's really tough to see oh, yeah. i mean even if even but again if you see a few that clues you into presence or making that left or right slide well, in forward facing too you get to see how much they're actually moving they're not just sitting there usually they're actually in movement the whole time right so you can start to see the tail flicker you can start to see like what it is and get an idea of what type of fish it is um whether you're on you know the the forward mode or the down mode so so kind of getting back to like some of your travels um i guess it's not a secret but i'm gonna let the cat out of the bag there so you were fishing on lake of the woods and you were doing some spoons like like Great Lake spoons, which I don't think of traditionally as a big fish pattern necessarily, even though the PWT championship was won like, I don't know, 20 some years ago, yeah. if you remember. Uh, right, right. And it was dipsies and spoons on Erie in October, like a long, long time ago. Like everywhere, yeah. But, so, you know, on Lake of the Woods, you want to talk a little bit about that with guys traditionally not fishing that way? Yeah, we were, uh, we were kind of cornered into just the, the U.S. waters. We weren't allowed to go into Canada at the time. So big basin fishing is what it was. Kind of like a Lake place Erie. really close to here, right? Yeah. So actually uh, my my friend, I'll call him that, uh, Bob Needles, my, or I can call him my torture buddy. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, depends what you're into. But uh, um, <laughs> He was with me, and we were catching fish in different ways, you know, jigging and trolling with lead core. Everybody's lead core trolling, you know, big baits. And I don't have the patience for it, so I was kind of losing my mind letting out, you know, 220 feet of lead core to get that bait out. It takes forever, and you're only allowed one rod per guy. So um, I'll give the credit to Bob. He's like, well, why don't we, what about a dipsy here? I'm like, all right, like, do it. Sends it down. His catch rate was probably three to one to mine. Well, in just the in and out time. In and, yeah, the down and up was so much faster. And we were, we were catching big walleyes that were eating small saugers. The problem with the small saugers was they would bite the baits that the big walleye would eat. So you... So that you, time of in and out, the efficiency was the... It wasn't that the dipsy was that good, it's just that much better for... It was for that much down. faster, yeah. And when you could also pick up your speed, right? So you that speed sensitivity that lead core has, the dipsy doesn't have as much. It has some, but- It almost going, likes it. <laughs> yeah, going three, two. Oh, you know? whoa, yeah, that's, just, that's- Yeah, so you really hooked them real good. One treble hook versus two, seems like a better ratio, the, the landing ratio, and we were pinning them really good, you know? You'd have them hooked in the top and the bottom, their face would be closed, and I wouldn't slow the boat down, just crank them in, winch them, you know? There's always, I mean, that's why I kind of think of you with you know, always trying different tactics. I mean, what are some other good examples of people fishing traditional things? I mean, tournaments have done that. Like, th that's opened the deal. I mean, everybody, like on Mille Lacs, they used to just fish slip floats. Now they're fishing them different and fishing reef runners and yeah. tail dancers and stuff. But, like, give me some other good things you've seen. Well, I mean, you can fall into that trap of being comfortable, right? Uh, a lot of us that have done it for a long time, you look at a lake and go, trolling right and cover a lot of water and things like that and don't get me around there's a time and a place where trolling is going to outproduce everything right but there are 
occasions where grabbing the spinning rod, getting on the bow mount, and the fish are not reacting to any type of trolling tactic, casting is going to win. So you look at a lot of these things where it was traditionally a trolling bite, and I got out of the bag with Keith and Gary doing it up in Green Bay, but it had been happening before that. Yeah, they didn't. Know, they they, 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 didn't, they yeah. weren't the ones that started no, that. No, no, but that right. was like the first big. Oh, here's here's what's going on. But it, you know, you get what happened on Erie last fall, right? And I don't know. It, I think the guys that are leaning more towards, hey, let's try something new. Uh, even though it's not new, but it's new for that body of water. I think a lot, a big trap people fall into, they read, this is what you have to do at this body of water. This is what did this for this tournament, all the historical stuff. And then somebody blows the doors off of it with, with a different tactic. I'm you know? picking up what you're throwing down. And I yeah. think like to expand upon that a little bit, is it fair to say that, like if everybody goes out and they're trolling bandits, reef runners, tail dancers, whatever it is, right? It's much harder to differentiate yourself from the field. Yeah, you because play the lottery. It, it, yeah. Right. Yeah. And when you get on one of those deals, casting, like let's say when Hoyer won the championship, mm. and I, in a little, I know a little bit about that piece of structure that they were doing from, sure. from past fishing. Like that's also like what he did, not saying that can't happen again, but things perfectly lined up. And so it's easier to fall in your face it is. It's you're definitely you. Yeah, you risk it for the biscuit when you do it. You know. You know. It's, risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, yeah. You're if you're gonna go big on that kind of stuff. It, sometimes you put yourself in a situation like where he went. You might not have a plan B anywhere near it, right? I've done that and failed miserably too, right? You know, you get on get on a bite that you're like, I'm gonna get five maybe six bites and if i get them on the boat i can win it or i if i get one bite i'm gonna look like an idiot so yeah so let's get i mean you're a guy you you i mean your guy likes being successful right so mm. if you're success if you're good at doing this you have to be that that mindset yeah. so we had brandon palinick on the podcast and you ask a guy like that that like really makes a true living just fishing sure. and a very good one and you start asking him questions about like, hey, is Angrel of the Year, you know, because now he's won two. We had him on right after he'd won the second one, or actually just before he officially had won the second one. And, you know, like that's the coveted title. But yet, if, if you're fishing to be the most consistent guy, it's harder to win, a lot of guys would say. Yeah. I mean, because what we just said, right? Yeah. Like if you're going for that deal that's going to win you that, at some point you're going to slip and it's very difficult to come back and let's say have enough points to be angle of the year so sure. what what is your philosophy i mean do you want to risk it for the biscuit or do you are you want to be consistent and cash checks you play it safe and you're going to get burned every time right so you you can have an okay day but you're going to have to have a great day in the tournaments i fish or you're you won't even end up in check range the uh the year i got angler of the year i i was trying to win every tournament i was at yeah that i didn't play it safe in the single one i didn't say i'm just gonna go catch my five fish and be done I, you want to be competitive so uh there's not any more uh, a, a way to just play it completely safe and and end up in the top quartile with with these guys it's just not gonna happen yeah. Speaking of like totally uh, a terrible transition, but I mean, I'm a fishing guy doing a podcast, so right? Yeah, yeah. Like, whatever. What I mean, happened, that's producer yeah. dude's like yeah. great segue because he's a TV producer guy and he's yeah, like just yeah. rolls his eyes. But talking about like fishing pranks. Oh, tons of them. I mean, I, I know you're a prankster. Oh, yeah. Your your buddy Bob literally says he has to deprogram after fishing with both of us. Yeah, I feel bad for what's in his brain now, but you know, <laughs> definitely like I won't turn on the radio when fishing. Just don't do that. But I'll sing to Bob, so that's always good. Uh, pranks pulled on me. Well, uh, pretty sing, dangerous one. Well, back, well, hold yeah, on. Yeah. Sing to Bob. Yeah. Are yeah. you serenading him? A little or, bit. Uh, well, I mean, gangster rap. Well, that, yeah, yeah gangster he, rap. Because he's big on that. Yeah, yeah. Christmas carols in July. He he really likes those. So yeah. Yeah, Bob Needles. Gotcha. <laughs> changed silver bells into silver bass, you know, and sang it on repeat oh. for, for an hour and a half. Yeah, he didn't, yeah. Like, he didn't like that one, but yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So I, I feel like you probably have like in your mind, because you're a little demented like that, you probably have like a top five pranks that you've done on the water. Because guys love these stories of just messing with people. Yeah. Not that I would ever do it, of course. I mean, the last one that was real fun. So uh, Wayne Van Dyke, also known as Wanye Midwest. Pretty, pretty good dude, right? <laughs> Mostly. Um, you know, we had some shirts made on him, you know, you know, Wayne's Midwest tour, some t-shirts we all gave out to everybody. But uh, the last one I really got him with is, I don't know why he did it, but he sent us all a picture of him on... Like, so he set himself up. Yeah, he did it to himself. At least that's what, that's how we yeah, look at it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you're asking for it, right? Of him on a, a, a toy pony. It's at Meyer. It's called Sandy. Put a penny in it, you know, da, da, da. So he put a put that picture to us. Well, a lot of editing happened, but the one I the one I stayed with was just him and the pony. Turned it in a black and white photo, sent it out to a, a print and ship fake tattoo place. Got it on my arm, got it weathered in real good, and then <laughs> just didn't say anything. Wore a t-shirt while we're eating pizza, and he's like, "Oh, you got a tattoo?" And I'm like, "Real this arm? It's about seven inches long, right there." And he's He's like, I've never heard Wayne swear until that time, you know, so, yeah. See, that's that's like a Bob deal, too. Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah, so. Why do all the nice guys always filter into the dirty guys? I, I think they, they like it, you they know? They do. Yeah, they do. They have to have. They have to have it. It's a need, <laughs> not a want. No, yeah, they have to. A need. That's yeah. a good one. What? I feel like you have a long list of these. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, I don't know if I want to go in this one. Yeah, you do. All right. We can always not edit it out. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's fine. At the beginning of uh, of smartphones, right? Not a lot of people knew what was going on with them, and they, they had an app. It's probably illegal now. It should be. <laughs> it probably was then too. But it go ahead. It probably was. It's called Spoof App, and you could change your phone number from who you were calling from, change your voice, all this good stuff. Oh, telemarketers do that. Oh all the yeah, time. yeah. So we're at dinner, and uh, you know, just in local here. And um, I, there's five of us, and the waitress comes back and she asks if there's, you know, anything else we want. And the, all of us were, you know, married except for one guy. And he says, "Hey, I'll, can I get your phone number?" So she writes it down on the bill. And Wayne says, "Oh, she gave you a fake phone number." So my friend took Wayne's phone and called it and she pulled the phone out of her back pocket. I'm like, well, he set himself up, right? So we go back to the hotel and I'm in my boat rigging everything as usual up till midnight, just like trying to figure something out. And I go, go back in the room and watch Wayne call from a fake 419 phone number, pretend to be her husband that I don't know if she had or not, <laughs> and watch Wayne, or her Wayne's pacing back and forth nervous because I'm in a biker gang at this point and my whole crew is gonna show up to Wayne's hotel room, which I somehow knew the number for. So, <laughs> and then just hung up and then went back to rigging my rods. So, so I didn't let him off the hook till the next day, so. Sorry, Wayne. Does he, he, he now knows? He knows Like, now. the whole thing? Yeah, yeah. Wanye Midwest is a good sport for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> Wanye Midwest. Yeah, yeah. That is just, this, that's my type of dumpster fire. Producer yeah. dude, I mean, he, see, now am I looking good or is this just par for the course? Yeah, but I mean, I get them pulled on me too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know. Like, who's, who's got it? Because somebody's got to have some matzo to do it when you're, Maybe I'm not gonna say like me because I wouldn't do these things. No, but. yeah, well, no, I would. No, I no. mean these are alleged. Uh, but uh, they, I forget where we were. Uh, it was Leech Lake, and done for the day. And we're sitting there after supper and say, "Hey, how do you turn the light on your light?" Well, I'm like, "What do you mean? You just turn your interior lights on. The light turns on. What are you talking about?" Oh no, no. Uh, can you show me? It's dark, right? So I hit the button. I go on my live, will open up, snapping to her about yay big, tries to take a chunk out of me. I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. that's pretty serious. Yeah, that's pretty serious. So yeah. now, now you got to get it out of there. Oh, I did. Yeah, I grabbed it and just gave it to him. And it kind of landed on somebody's foot. So, uh, so. Yeah, can we say who put it in there? Uh, Jason Doyen. 
Yeah, Canadian. That was what makes sense there. Oh yeah, yeah Canadian. I've yeah. had Canadians. They had a Canadian throw a uh, porcupine about that big up in the way north country. I mean, like yeah, yeah, yeah. they threw yeah. it at me, and I'm like. Yeah. He's like, oh, it was, it was like six inches from you. And I'm like doing one of these. I'm yeah, like, that's a bad deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because yeah. we were in the bush. This, yeah, uh, they can't clean themselves, so they're dirty creatures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 snapping turtle in the line, like, mmm, bells are, things are going off. Yeah. See how nice I am to you, producer dude? Yeah, good but, times. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a dangerous game, though. You know, at least, though, like when you open it up, you got a little bit of time. You know, yeah, yeah. depending on how he is, yeah. that could have. He was not happy. Uh, the, the better, yeah. see, see, I, again, not that my brain thinks this way, but did this guy have something coming his way? Oh, oh yeah, definite. Yeah, I don't, I can't mention it. Because <laughs> I mean, that, that that that's actually, even though I'm disappointed, that's the right answer. Because yeah. if someone does a, a snapping turtle, like we don't get even, we elevate. Yeah, it's ten times. Whatever it is, that's the rule. Ten times a snapping turtle is yeah. like, that's jail time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. If you get caught. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. This could be a, that could be a deadly combo. Now I see why Bob is, has to decompress. Yeah, Bob's a good dude. But yeah, it's too much. Too much. Yeah. 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 He says that I've taught him things that are not good. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I do him favors, you know, so it all works out in the end. So. Yeah, he's so he can be bought basically. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But you know, you know, while we joke around, you know, I think we're kind of similar in a lot of ways. And one of the guys was That's telling scary. me it is. Yeah. It's very producer dude. Actually, he just you guys can't see it, but he just like did one of these. But like, I think guys that are the most intense or screw around like that are often the guys that do the best you know what i mean because yeah. it's almost like it's a digression a little bit like palanick's like that like if yeah. you, uh, a lot of a lot of the guys that i know behind the scenes are like that but like one of the things i had heard where you spent another buddy of mine tom keenan was like how, how did you run up in there and so on one of the reservoirs you ran on really shallow water and everyone probably just thought you just were like an animal and just went for it uh, yeah i mapped it out bob was with me when we did it Mapped it on side scan, found where there wasn't stumps, made a nice plot trail, got it mapped in there. It cut three miles off of my run, and I was trying to get to one spot that was 26 miles away. We passed, I think, every boat but one, and that guy went there, but I got past 80 boats that day. He didn't try to follow me through there, but he went outside of me a little bit, and there's stumps to the left of me, not into the shore. And then he panicked and went out and went back around. But I got him even in the big waves. Uh, I had to catch him on on the way there. So I'm like, ah, he might be going there. Better better pass. I caught Wayne too. <laughs> Interesting. So give me some other examples of that because that's not your first rodeo. So I mean, yeah. we're not trying to get like top secret stuff, but yeah. I think a lot of people, the point of it is, is you got to have to think outside the box. So whether it's the lure thing and casting yeah. something different than another jig in a plastic. And it has to be kind of educated, right? You can't just like randomly do things. Like you, not just randomly running up on a flat full of stumps. You take the time. Yeah, to so, map it out. Yeah, yeah so yeah, give yeah, me some other yeah. examples of, of things that to be a better fisherman that, you know, people maybe can give themselves an advantage. Most people probably aren't going to fish tournaments listening to yeah, this. Yeah, for but, sure. But it doesn't matter. It's There's always little things you can do. I think just spending the time to learn a new technique whether it's something that somebody else has showed you or things like that just just put away your your stuff that you go to all the time don't bring it with you go out and learn it learn your electronics man i, I think the thing i've seen the most with my friends especially is like things are set up wrong like the transducer is not set right first your first contact point their screen settings are off they don't know what they're looking at things like that um but try try new things just have fun with it like it's not always about catching all the fish it's trying to catch them different i'm ways. gonna stop you right there yeah. because like the one thing we we're pretty popular on the youtube page we put a lot of videos out and mm -hmm. without a doubt the the how to's the electronics those are those because everybody knows like 
you can go to a guy, even a guy you whoop, whoop his butt in a tournament, mm -hmm. and he can be like, I'm not listening to Ed about jigging or trolling or whatever yeah, it is. Fine. But you talk about electronics, everybody listens. Like right. I, our seminars, like electronics, because people know yeah. they don't know it. They, right. they, they, or at least they know they don't know enough, right? right? But the thing that just blows my mind is we put a lot of really specific content up there, and I still get the comments or the direct messages, emails, whatever it may be, and the guys are like, give me your settings, man. And I'm like, it's, to me, that's kind of like saying at your seminars, I'm sure it's the same thing. Hey, you give this whole in-depth thing about kind of what we're talking about. And then at the end, the guy's like, hey, what color crankbait do I get? And you're like, dude, did yeah, you dude, listen? listen. Yeah, because yeah. again, like with the electronics thing, that's why I want to kind of slow down on that. Yeah. Regardless of the brand that you have, like if, if I jump in this guy's boat or you jump in that guy's boat, you probably can't be as successful because that screen's dirty, and I'm not talking about physically dirty. Yeah. You're, it, he, he doesn't have clean, good power. Right. His transducer's not in the right spot. Right, right. It's not the right angle, or he's got two, he's running two or three at a time, yeah. you know, depending on how that's set up or the wrong frequency. Right. So yeah. Give me a little bit on some of that, maybe, and things. Yeah, that, yeah I, I rig my own boats because I like to know how everything's going, right? Uh, but a lot of, what I see is like they're pretty well set when you get them there's some things that you want to change inside of it but it's the layout of where I biggest thing is where people put their transducer whether it's on the bow mount and it's forward facing or if it's if it's on the back end and it, you're running a skimmer or where their structure scan or their uh, you know their side scan things around it a lot of times it's just all wrong it's it's all wrong it's getting getting interference it's it's they're losing bottom they can't mark fish at speed if if you're fishing great lakes especially in erie if you can't mark fish going 40 miles an hour you're in trouble you're in trouble right you're going to cover some you can't, water you can't you can't yeah and if you're side scan you can't see stuff on that you know you get into some shallow water situations where that's the only way you're going to see them and so you're going to go you're going to go spend time in dead water and guys will go to i Waypoint fishermen are the weirdest, right? Like, hey, somebody caught them here two days ago, so they'll just go up, set up, and troll through it without going to look and see, is there anything here, right? You know, and I'm definitely gonna go drive around and take a look before I, I'm, I might go to something that I heard, but you know, if I'm on the way there and the screen lights up, I'm not gonna just drive over them and go past them. So there's been a lot of tournaments where I fished right by the takeoff. Like one actually fished in a boat ramp and watched guys drive over the fish every day in practice so the hard part was like being tricky in practice and not letting anybody know i wanted to fish in there driving over and seeing all the fish and catch a couple you know uh, was that a local tournament or is that nah, this was where was it? south dakota so i love fishing the dakotas it's, it's, it's a blast god's country there. yeah it's good times yeah so let's back up a little bit about yeah. that because i think it, you kind of went over something that's a big deal cr pretty quickly like there's a lot of things in fishing that are subjective like and, yeah. it, and it even comes into like i'm six three so maybe i can use a longer rod than maybe some guy that's quite a bit shorter but yeah my, my point would be if you're jigging and you're using a six foot rod versus a seven or a six and a half i don't know that's a game changer it, it changes how that's going to get worked but i but you may do it you may you physically do it differently yeah. right, right right where with the electronics and where i'm going with it there's a lot of things that are subjective like i wouldn't say like hey that's why you're not catching him bob or whatever. yeah yeah but when you when you look at the the boat and the setup again you may be fishing a little different than we are but just like you said on the front and the back things being overlaid like what is a good setup for you with electronics yeah that's because i don't think that's so subjective like we all have the same basic boat i don't care if you have a ranger or a different yeah. brand you got 21 feet you got transducers are going to overlay with each other those you can be really objective on it's not subjective right it's right. kind of science right so having it in clean water so like if you're going to have an externally mounted transducer for your 2d having it in a spot where there's not going to be any or very little turbulence going over it having it mounted just at or just below the the lowest point of your boat having it right there and then having you can have your two your structure scan mount a little higher like on a ranger you can have it on the stop but having it where it's going to have a clean shot of everything 
and making sure that you're not running it next to some monster power supply or you insulate around it. Making sure that the unit itself is getting clean power and that you're not just hooking it to any anything you can have. Having the right battery for it so it's getting clean power. So, it, you know, you can run AGMs or lead acid and still be okay, but if you're gonna fish a lot and things like that, lithium's the way to go, right? Um, and then when you get up into the Ford, uh, you can use Ford on pole scans or if you're ADD like me, it's on the bow mount, right? Because you're actively chasing the fish from down current or down, downwind and keeping that boat straight as you're, as you're looking for them. But having it with, I like an offset, uh, offset mount, Fish Obsessed makes a good one. There, I'm sure there's some other brands, but where it's it's kicked away from the can of the motor, so that part of the of it's you're, not you're interfering. Not, it's not like being at a football game and you've got a yeah, bleacher right in front like, of you. Yeah, so you're not missing half your signal, and then it changing the offset so there isn't kicked out, so you get a really good line on what's happening there, uh, and then. Yeah, having your settings ad adapted for where you're fishing, right? So you can't just set it on auto and let it go always. If you're fishing dirtier water, you're gonna get more clutter. And I think a lot of people get worried about like seeing some clutter on the screen. You should see some clutter. If you see it's completely clean or you're using all the auto features, you're, you're, you're miss, limiting. You limit, you're gonna limit stuff. So if you catch an edge of a fish because it's clean water and you're spooking them with your boat, um, you can see that it, and then you can kind of go back and really figure it out but um, yeah and, and uh, one thing I did a long time ago and it was with just traditional 2D was I knew I was catching fish and I knew what they looked like at trolling speed started doing loops after I was done fishing right okay what do they look like at 10 miles an hour what do they look at 15 what do they look like at 20 you know long the spot out but nobody was fishing and I was done and then like how fast can I go and mark them and still be able to interpret it on that setup when I'm rigging a boat now and that, I, oh, and that, uh, and that changes runs, yeah, yeah and then that changes in my opinion day to day because of the water conditions yeah. the roughness the clarity oh, yeah. Yeah. but but like, to your point I would say 40 is kind of on the high end. It's got to be pretty nice. Yeah, yeah, calm day. 20 is very easy. Yeah. You almost almost have to have that to stay on plane good. Right. I would say most of the time I'm driving 25 to 30 miles an hour. That's my good Yeah. for me. For sure, for sure. But, so like I run Dakota Lithium. I've got a 135 amp hour battery. Like that's, and it's like this big. It yeah. weighs nothing. And I'm running generally 10 gauge to like each unit. That's a way to do it. And have a distribution panel back. Is that kind of? Yeah, I'm running 10 gauge. Uh, I run three units on the front, and then I solder my connections and, and seal them all. I don't like loose connections. I, my boat may come out of the water at times and pound down. I've seen a few pictures. Just, yeah, sometimes some that stuff happens, but um, nothing's more heartbreaking than like losing electronics in a tournament. Yeah, it, you know, where you don't have a signal or or it's just not right. It, you can't do anything. I, 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 mentally, you're gonna be out of it. Right? So on the bow, when you're running it up there, are you running 10 gauge all yeah. the way? Yeah. yeah. So this year on one of my other boats, I actually, I put a distribution panel on the bow behind the deal. I tried it out and ran six gauge and then ran back to the same switch and okay. battery just because I had so much. It's actually our project boat that we've been working on. People probably have not have seen this by the time this comes out, but just because we kind of ran, like that boat is 20 years old and it wasn't designed, like nobody was doing that then, okay, right? So just yeah, and, and so thing, huh? I'm interested to see on how that may or may not work because again, I traditionally have not spent a lot of time on the bow and we're spending more and more time there, <coughs> you know, to see, yeah. is that gonna be enough? Because you get a lot of spaghetti up there when you start running, you know, three, four, 10 gauges up there. It, it gets, yeah, it gets kind of packed, you know, you get a lot of fiberglass slivers in your hands running that stuff. So. Cause you're, you're like your live sonar. So you've got three units, that's three 10 gauge wires. And then we've got What's a, the box? we've got a live sonar deal. Yeah. So you've got at least four. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is there anything else? Um, not up on there. No. Yeah. And wire, wire's not getting cheaper. No. The, nah, the, nah. the wire tree. There, there are some aftermarket companies that do it all for you. And like, if you're not comfortable with electronics, you can outsource that. And I know, I don't really get that to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah. When I see those and the way they're put together, I don't. Yeah. But better you're, than 
just winging it, I guess, if you're nervous about it. You know? Yeah, your your OCD would not allow that, I would no. imagine. I don't. Have you seen some of those aftermarket things? The way that they have the splices and stuff, it just doesn't seem. Uh, yeah, I have not bought one. And the, and they're they're not cheap. No. They're, 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 hmm. Yeah. So what are some other things that we should know to be? you know, a better angler, basically. I mean, you're an open guy with these things. And again, this may translate some guys from South Dakota, it's gonna be a different thing, but as you've traveled and, and you kind of got outside of your comfort zone, what are some of these things that have made, not necessarily even through your tournament stuff, because yeah. I know you like to just mess around. You like to fish, right? Yeah, like, I just like to go fish. I went to New York uh, a couple weeks ago, I just went perch fishing, because I hadn't perch fished the Finger Lakes before. Um, spend the time on the water, like trying to learn new things. Like, don't, don't get stuck in a rut like this is what's always worked here this is the only thing that works here there might be a better way to do it even if you're catching them but you think you could catch more try something man like even it's even if it's just seems really weird like casting detroit river jigs out on erie on three quarter ounce jig heads with finesse minnows while guys are trolling in the back and just smoking them before they can get them with the i, I loved it i'm like oh, yeah you guys run those rods just pick them off before they get back to but uh, yeah, experiment with stuff and like, I don't know, don't be afraid to uh, to like push the limits of what you think a walleye is gonna go after. Like the power fishing stuff to me is is different. Uh, last, was that last Erie tournament I was fishing, I was by Mentor, we were out of Huron, and guys by me are putzing along at, you know, one two to one six, and I'm screaming by. I'm going three miles an hour because I put my fish hawk down. I could see that there was a mile an hour current. I'm like, no fight a bait moving two miles an hour, no problem. So I'm getting four boards to go back at well, a time. I mean, that's a that's a good point right there. That yeah. these guys that they the speed that they're doing, they're not even doing what they think they are because right. they didn't put the fish yeah, hawk the down. The bait's probably doing nothing. It's not even moving. It's, yeah. It's, it's, Maybe it's diving. Yeah. It, it's funny you say it because that's kind of been for the last couple of years been my angler goal. Yeah. Because my personal situation is not like most guys, but when you're when you're guiding and you have a husband and wife that goes fishing one day a year, they have the patience of an angry raccoon. You yeah, know, where yeah. it's like you got to catch. Or when producer do, we're out. We've got three hours. We got weather coming in. We've got a video. We've got to hit or shooting something for a sponsor. You know, camera time, and it's like we got to go, 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 and. I've gotten away for I just don't have that experimentation time and so we've made during the COVID we did a bunch of that where we just started doing some crazy stuff and reality I'm, I'd like to know what your percentage is for you. I would say probably 90% of it doesn't work. Yeah. But, like, but that 10% that's all you need. Yeah and you can if if you get your stuff organized and you have an, like a little bit of an idea what you want to do. I, Otter tail example for me. I went out there, got to have creek chubs, got to have red tails. Gotta, I got all that stuff. I ended up throwing them all out, you know, $100, hundreds of dollars of bait, you know, all these tanks to keep them alive, you know, and went to that, went to, you know, glide baits, went to trolling, went to uh, weeds, went to deep structure. None of that was really gone. That This is in three hours I went through this stuff. Uh, hour four, you know, get past the weed edge, get on the inside of it, in three to four feet of water in a sand flat, they're stacked. They're just stacked. Pitch a, I'm like, I'm scrambling. I'm like, ah, I need a three ounce, eight, eight ounce jig, and I had this saltwater plastic that was really stiff. Throw that thing in there, doink, there's one. I'm like, ah, is that a fluke? Doink, get another one. Snag a perch on the side. I'm like, oh, now I know what they're eating. Right. And Right. Yeah, so, and that's a lot of people would be like, oh, there's a little perch in here, we need to get out of here. Yeah. Like, that's a key. Oh, like, yeah. that's why they're there, man. Right, right. And kind of caught a couple more to get, you know, get an idea what's in there. And then I just left. Drove around the rest of the lake and looked for the same stuff and marked, depending on the wind, you know, so the, the, where the wind's blowing in on, that's going to be better. So I don't have to catch them there. I just need to know that they're going to be there when the wind blows up on that or they have a chance to be there. And you fish it really fast, you know, get in there, get out and try to not get seen. You know, the, the things we do in pre-fishing, uh, those are some other pranks I played on guys. That, that's really fun. Like, pretend like you hook one, pretend like, you know, you're trying to hide it from them, get on the other side of the boat, let them come up, sneak up on you, and then reel everything up and leave, and let them fish dead water for a while. Yeah. See, that that's my that's yeah. Ed, that's my yeah, kind of deal. Step on a line, make it look like you're fighting a fish on a trolling rod. Oh, that's yeah. naughty. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, 
Is it, does the arm wrestle challenge kind of fit into that? I mean, what, what do you have in mind? Well, I mean, I actually, Matt Robertson was on our podcast, the Onum guy. Okay. Yeah, I challenged him to a wrestling match. Because he, he, yeah, well, he actually, he was wrestling all the Bassmaster guys. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you're not even that good. I'd wrestle you and beat your ass. But, wow. but I, I had just heard that I should bring it up really? about the arm wrestle challenge with you. I don't know what it even means. Well, I don't know. Like, it, it happens every now and then. It happened at work one time. And, uh, Younger days, we'll say that. Different company that I work now. Um, <laughs> uh, and um, I had a guy that played college football, big dude. And um, I don't know why he was just trash talking. And then one of our coworkers egged him on into doing it, and they're like, or me into doing it, arm wrestling with him. And so, six o'clock in the morning, you know, office workers and get into it and he goes and I go and his arm snap. <laughs> so yeah so no loss inside there was like a million hours that's no not where I thought this was see. going yeah, yeah it was it was pretty bad but yeah. I mean, that, he healed up he's fine now it's like 20 years ago yeah. <laughs> that's not where I thought that was going but yeah. could you leave us with one more of your favorite fishing pranks follies or something because I mean I personally as much as I love hearing the little fishing insight yeah, I, I kind of like the pranks to be honest with you. Pranks are good. Oh man, <laughs> jeez. Some like, of the, yeah, I'm trying to think of ones I can say without getting in big trouble. Well, we cannot uh, edit them out, so just yeah, just say yeah, it, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, definitely. I mean, are you are you really kind of going candy ass mode on me now that you're kind of no, not you're, candy ass mode? How about if I? How about you give me a really good one, and then you we'll give you like six hours to think about it, and producer oh, dude will edit it out if you don't. Oh man. Oh. Uh, just give me a good one, because no one wants to, you know, it's like, oh, tell me your best joke, and we hear a dad joke, nah, yeah, we want to hear a good don't joke. Want a lame ass one, you want no. a good one. No, Ed, you haven't been, you've been marginal, you haven't been lame. I haven't been but lame. I feel yeah. like we need to, to just end on a, on a high note. Well, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know when somebody parks in a boat trailer, and they take up a couple spots instead of one, and they take the front one. Oh, yeah. yeah. We've done videos on this. I like to leave personal notes for my friends <laughs> on there. And I may have drawn a graphic and, and put, you know, a love letter in a way, but not really, you know, and redrew the lines for them, you know, your own personal spot, you know, so, yeah. So yeah. you're you're almost providing a public service it at the was, same time. It was, I'm sure they didn't see it that way. No, they, and they didn't figure it out right away. Is this somebody I might know? Yeah, they might be from Ohio, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Is he a pilot? And it was, no, no, I don't think he could take it. <laughs> I don't think he, he yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Yeah, no. We'll have to talk about that one yeah, later, yeah, but yeah. that's been good. Well, I'll tell you what, we appreciate you coming on the Big Water Podcast. Yeah. I know we both are speaking here at the Cleveland Boat Show, and that'll be over with by the time people uh, see this, but we're going to have a few videos from there up, and uh, we appreciate you stopping by. Appreciate you having me. Until the next episode, producer dude, who do we have to thank? Everybody? Bigwaterfishing.com, you, YouTube, Stitcher, Spotify, Google, Apple. How many did I forget? Tune into the Big Water Podcast. Check us out. Instagram, Facebook, just about everything Big Water Fishing. Until the next episode. <laughs>